mag es wie neu. To someone who knows Los Angeles only from movies, it might appear that everyone who has a job lives in the hills or at the beach. The dismal flatland between is the province exclusively of the lumpen proletariat. And most of them live next to an oil refinery. Yeah. And in death, they will rest next to an oil derrick. A hillside house may be appropriate for a hack composer. drug dealer on like the way up. I like this suit. Where'd you get this furniture? Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice Italian lady picked this up. Oh, it's so nice. Johnny Versace, right? Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson. Johnny Versace. David, come on. Take your feet off the couch. You don't do that at your mother's house, do you? Nouveau anal, I think this is called. But... All right. And here, here, here. Post, post. Or a music promoter on the way down. Terry Valentine. Yeah. Very nice to meet you. <laughs> Yeah, if you can afford a house like this, you buy a house like this, you know? You know? You can see the sea out there if you can see it. But in reality, a bookstore clerk couldn't afford to rent a house above Sunset Plaza, even if it is, as she claims, small and kind of run down. A fixer with jetliner views in the local realtor jargon would still have rented for two or three thousand dollars per month in 1995 no matter how much in need of TLC. Her bank robber boyfriend might live in Malibu. And back in the 60s, bohemian young people did live by the sand in Venice, although I don't remember the infinite pad. We may regard Cobra's Venice loft as a relic of the golden 80s, when product placement superseded script writing and movie cops abandoned the suburbs to become urban pioneers. But what about a struggling true crime writer and an unemployed photographer so cash-strapped they must recruit paying passengers for their move from Pittsburgh to California. Yet when they arrive in Los Angeles, they immediately take up residence in a spacious Malibu beach cottage. And I don't like geographic license. It's hard to make a theoretical argument against it. After all, in a fiction film, a real space becomes fictional. Why shouldn't a car chase jump from the Venice Canals to the Los Angeles Harbor 30 miles away? Oh my God, no!
Why shouldn't the exit from a skating rink in Westwood open directly onto Fletcher Bowron Square in downtown Los Angeles, 15 miles east? But one fiction is not always as good as another. Like dramatic license, geographic license is usually an alibi for laziness. Silly geography makes for silly movies. I warned you. I tell you. confide or deal with your successor. He wants you. In fact, Mark, there is no successor. We can take care of drowning dogs, but please help us take care of the drowning world. Don't you think it's uneconomical to waste yourself on dogs? Even dogs you love. I met a man who loved everything. And he died in a flood of shit. We know. That's just details. When I was a boy, I had a dog, and his name was Louie. And when he crawled under the porch to die, I stayed there with him. So what? I wanted to see what it was that made him crawl under there. Nobody's a boy anymore. Must we prove it? Back up, then full speed and crash into the police car. My pleasure, sir. <laughs> 